just finished another week of work and here we are back at Pine Roof. Um, Albie did start putting the front door on today, but as you can see behind me here, we're sort of doorless. It's like seven o'clock at night on Friday and we don't have a door. Apparently it's been a bad day with the door, so Albie tells me, and we might not have one tonight, but he's got a plan as always. I think the plan is to uh, just jimmy something with this door tonight so that we have a door overnight till tomorrow. Then we'll be back in the morning and I'm sure Albie will be refreshed and in a little better mood than he's in right now. And uh, he'll fit a new door and by the end of the weekend it'll look pretty good. And if people want to sell stuff, I will find you. Well, it has been done though. Looking around, it's looking a lot better. Albie's managed to paint the majority of this room. We're making progress. This will probably be the first room that actually gets painted. So I may mean to make a trip to Bunnings during the weekend, which is my favourite store, so that we can look at paint colours. I think maybe a greenish grey. So I'll go and get some swatches and we'll have a play and see what we come up with. So a good couple of weeks ahead of us of work, but hopefully in the next couple of weeks this room will get finished or probably the first one that gets done. Okay, we're on our way to Pinery again for another day up there working. We've got uh, Ashley, Chloe and Reese in the back with their dogs all heading up for a day at Pinery. It's a bit wet and horrible weather today but we're going anyway because Albie has to put the door back on the house because right now it doesn't have a door. So you keen for that babe? Yeah, get the door on there so we can lock the place up. Not going to um, have issues today? Hopefully not. We might have issues when everyone's up there. And hopefully we're going to see Michael and Julie up there from fourth generation renovations. They're going to pop in and say hello. So I'm sure we can put them to work doing something. Michael beat us there as we've been a bit slack due to the cold weather and all. And he decided to come around to shoot some footage to feature on his channel. So if you're from his channel, welcome. And if you're not, go check him out. He does some great work. Once again, if you haven't seen Michael's content, he does renovation work, so go check him out if you want to see some great renovation work. But it was back onto the door after Michael had finished filming. We picked up this old door from a, a reclaim yard because we wanted an old solid door because we knew we'd have to cut this down a fair way. Um, one of the things with these old cottages is no doorway standard and they're definitely not built to the standard sizes that we have these days. So it's a lot narrower than a normal door and a little bit shorter. So we've had to cut this down to try and fit it in the hole. The reason we're putting this door in the front is that it's quite dark in that front lounge room. So we're putting the frosted glass door in so that we can get some natural light into the lounge room. Hopefully brighten the cottage up a little bit. So, it's truth time, now we've cut the sides off. Now we're going to put it in there and see if it actually fits. but it's really close. So now we're just gonna plane a little bit off this edge in the hope that it's enough to actually get it to go through. So go to a uh, finer measurement now. We'll go with the plane rather than taking it off with the saw because the last thing I'm gonna do is take too much off it. So 
while I was wandering around checking all the junk that was laying around, I discovered this old door, which has got a um, old iron uh, frame in it. And I've measured it up and that I think is actually gonna fit perfectly on the front door. So once the front door's on, we're gonna clean this up and this will go over the top of it. So I think that'll give it a nice rustic look and it'll suit the cottage rather than put a brand new modern fly screen door on it. So fingers crossed, we can get this one to work, reclaim it and it'll have cost us actually nothing. Well, the door's on. Hinges have been fitted. This has been put back on, a bit of fiddling around. I haven't got the door handle on, that's a job for tomorrow. But I think she's looking pretty good. As you can see, we're all about security here. Here's the temporary doorknob for the night. Hopefully it holds and we'll be back tomorrow to actually fit a real one. Okay, another day at Pinery. Albie's got to get that door with a lock on it before we leave tonight. And Reese is here today, so him and I will be concentrating on getting some pointing done because we're trying to get the pointing done now. We've probably got about a window of two months before it's gonna get really hot. And as it gets really hot, the pointing cracks if you do it in heat. So we're gonna try and get the rest of the pointing done on these two side walls before summer really starts to bite. And we're getting a really early spring here in South Australia. So hopefully we can get this pointing done before we have to stop because once it's hot, we won't be able to do a lot of it. We'll have to wait till it cools down again. First thing you have to do when you get the pinery is light a fire, because that's what the pinery is all about, it's fire. Normally I use petrol, I'm not allowed to in here. Albie's here just tuning up the chainsaw because apparently that pile of wood over there is not enough wood. We have to cut down a tree. Apparently, we always have to have an excuse to cut down a tree. It seems to be the norm that he finds a tree to cut down. He's banned from cutting trees down, but every now and then he finds another excuse to cut another one down. dropped off free the other day and I just had a thought we could use this for the deck for the dog's giant kennel that we've got at home. We'll cut to the future at some stage and we'll show you the giant kennel that Albie's built them. It's probably bigger than you know the cottage over there because apparently these dogs need to live in luxury so I think this will make a great deck for them. So now I've got to convince Albie to put it on the trailer and not burn it. Alright everybody, back at Piner again today. I'm going to try and finish this front door off. Made a couple of mistakes yesterday, so I'm going to fix them. Alison didn't like that angle. Now the angle's got the awesome. Alison. One hole. I don't know if it's meant to melt the plastic, but it did. I don't know if it's a one-use tool. It's not the sort of tools I'm used to.
you can see we're just moving the scaffolding across just to apply that mortar to the higher parts of the wall where we can't really reach um, we don't really want to hop up on a ladder it's just not the safest so yeah So I'm mixing up another lot of uh, mortar today to repoint the um, stone wall. What we're using, it's a traditional um, lime. It's already mixed in water and we're buying it by the bag. It's a traditional putty, so a traditional lime. So I did a lot of research to try and work out what I should use to make sure that we kept in with the period and also make sure that it didn't um, set too hard because if it's too hard then it will actually um, destroy the um, stones the old stonework so it's basically sacrificial it should be softer than the actual stones themselves so when the moisture wicks out it wicks out through this so it's expected to draw the moisture out and that stops the damp in the house so through a lot of research I found this it's actually quite local we're buying it by the bag and it's two buckets of this lime. I learned something new the other day. That paddle that I'll be used to mix this is actually for paint. I always thought it was for mortar and little did I know it's actually a paint paddle. So there you go. So one thing I've learned is always wear rubber gloves when you handle this stuff. I learned the hard way. One day I forgot to put them on and the next day all the skin peeled off my fingers and my fingers were like red raw for about a week. So it is quite caustic. Always wear rubber gloves or else you'll learn like me the hard way that uh, your skin does not like it at all. So now we add six buckets of sand. This is a fine sand, it's a plaster of sand. This particular one is rolling flat, that's the colour of it. Um, once again, I did a whole heap of research. I went out to a um, old farm up at Clare and they were repointing a cottage and we spoke to the stonemason there and he recommended this. It should be sourced and then um, it's been really good. It's actually quite a good match. So we've seen it dry on the wall there. We like the colour. So we went with this rolling flat sand. Previously picked all of this old pointing out. Um, it's probably been here a hundred years now, and the stuff up the top here is actually pretty firm. Down the bottom, it would fall out, and we had a lot of holes and cracks that we had to fill. But up here is quite good, so we haven't had to cut in as far. And what we're going to do is put a new level of pointing over the top of what's already there, just to make sure that this will last another hundred years. And one of the things we discovered through trial and error, we've discovered a few things through trial and error, is if there's a lot of dust, the new pointing doesn't stick particularly well, but Albie came up with the idea of using the leaf blower, which actually works really well. So before we start, we blow it out with the leaf blower, get rid of all that dust that's sitting on the rocks, and it helps the new mortar stick really well. And wet it down. After that, we go through and give it a light wet down, which helps the new mortar sticks to the old mortar and it also stops it drying out really quickly and helps with the cracking of the new mortar. So 
the issue we've found all the way across this wall is the previous owners where they found there was a hole would just chuck some concrete in the hole and as you can see concrete doesn't stick well to these rocks all it does is just sit there and cause issues so the problem with concrete is it's actually harder than the rocks so then the rocks become the sacrificial thing and the rocks crumble away and it also doesn't let the wall breathe which means we get rising damp inside so you should never put concrete on these it actually destroys them that's why we've had to go to lime and sand because it was traditional and it allows the wall to breathe this concrete has to come out before we start doing the pointing As you can see the concrete's literally stuck to nothing but it's just wedged in there so it's actually not really serving a purpose being in the wall anyway. can see that's not how to point a hole because we've, all we've got behind there is a whole heap of dust the concrete was sticking to nothing the rocks just fallen out and now we'll go and point that back in properly so it actually does what it's intended to do Okay, the rock's back in, and now we'll pack it with some more field stones in front, and that will actually hold in there properly. So this tool here was recommended by Daniel the plasterer. He uses it to suck up his plaster and put into his tool, and he suggested that we could try it to put the pointing into the cracks. I was a little skeptical, I must say, and I didn't think it would work, but seriously, it has saved us so much time. The rest of this wall, we've pointed by hand with a little trowel, and it's taken us hours and hours, and this has probably made it five times faster. So it's a game changer for us. Okay. Let's go and see what Albie's doing. I'm on the wall pointing and let's go and have a look what Albie's up to over here. I'm working hard up on the wall. Been there for hours now and let's come over here and have a look and see. What? I'm sitting here thinking what I'm going to do because the deadlock doesn't fit on the fucking door. Right up. What are you doing, babe? I'm sitting here thinking how I'm going to put that deadlock on because it don't fit on there. Do we need a deadlock? Yeah, we do. Can we get a different one? And you're not going to get them that narrow. It's because they're a piece of glass. Can we put them on the top of the door? I'm thinking about that. I'm just going to think about it, Alison. Yeah. Now Chloe and Ashley have joined us, it's time to put them to work cleaning up the rubbish we made chipping off the wall. before I can sponge it so I'm gonna to have to come back tomorrow after work and just sponge it over but other than that I think I've got a fair bit done today which is good it's slow going but this is actually a fair bit for half a day's work now off to see if Albie's got his jobs done don't burn anything because then if as soon as you burn it you always say oh I burnt that I needed it no I don't need this are you sure just yeah. don't burn it eh till we go and no we don't need it You always 
thrown it and then look, where's that other bit that you pulled out of the fire? Oh, right there. Saved the bit I needed and I didn't need yeah, it. Yeah, because you burnt it and then realised you needed it. Here. It's like, it's perfect. Nice. Now we just get a, get a nice bit of hardwood to put across yeah. here. I've got that piece of wood underneath yeah. your scaffold. I'm going to fill this in tomorrow morning. Tomorrow with um, some mortar and then I'm going to I'm going to cut that piece of timber to give size first. Okay. And then I'm going to fill that up and just stick it up there. They look good. Oh, I've got a bone to pick with you. Oh yeah, I told I you. Fucking I said, to, my new I said to you, oh, you need to watch that as I walked out. I told you I've got more water on the door. Done? Done. Door's done. So far. Yep. So far. So now, I suppose, the big decision, Albie. What colour is the door going to be? Red. Heritage red. Yeah. See, I think black there, black windows, no. black trim. And you want heritage red everywhere. Yeah, to match the red brick. And heritage red around there, over here. And on here. the um, on the barge bay. On the barge rail, yeah. Yeah. Where it's green now, you want heritage red. Yep. Yeah. All right, people. Thank you. What did you say this morning when we drove past um, Metal Art? I said everyone's corners are heritage red. And I like that. On their houses. Because I said, remember, I remember me no. saying a while ago, I like that, and you said, no, I don't like it. And now Let's you put it up for it debate. Does. All right, people. Heritage red or black for the door and the windows and the barge rails? Let us know in the comments. This weekend we've got the door on, it's got a handle on and we can lock the place up. So a few cosmetic touches, but other than that, I think it's looking really good. I think it actually has changed the whole look of the house now. Really like the glass panel and on the inside it's made it heaps brighter. We've got a lot of pointing done and it's time to pack up for another weekend. the door on and it's got a lock on it so we can lock up for the night and we also managed to clean up the mess that we made on the other wall ready for next week to do more pointing. We had a visit from fourth generation renovation from Mike and Cooper so go over and subscribe to their channel we'll put the link below uh, they're doing some really great stuff down there also like comment and subscribe if you like what we're doing because we will continue to put footage out as we continue to renovate this place. And we'll see you next week, peoples. Have a good night. Bye.